The Zaporizhia nuclear plant in southeast Ukraine is the largest nuclear station in Europe and the ninth largest in the world. In fact, Ukraine is one of the largest nuclear energy producers in the world, accounting for more than half of the country's total electricity. Unfortunately, this makes the Zaporizhia station a valuable strategic target. And since its invasion in March of 2022, it has been under the control of Russia. During the two years of its occupation, there have been numerous close calls, including artillery strikes, drone attacks, and reports of employees being forced to work at gunpoint. Ukraine is no stranger to nuclear disasters, with the memory of the Chernobyl accident still looming large in the backdrop. Still, Chernobyl wasn't on the front lines of an active war zone, where the situation can and does rapidly change. With so much on the line, is the world risking another nuclear catastrophe in Ukraine, either now or in the long term if the plant remains under extended military occupation? To find out, we need to answer a few questions. First, how bad has what's happened to the Zaporizhia station been? Second, how well equipped is it to deal with the damage? And finally, what do we need to do to ensure that we don't have another nuclear tragedy in Ukraine? Once we do that, we can put Ukraine, a country in the middle of a war zone, on the Atomic Blender nuclear energy leaderboard. One of the things that I often see is when a country wants to get a message out to a broad audience is that that message needs to be clear and understandable. Programs like ChatGPT have made it easier for governments and non-native speakers to sound more natural. Understanding how these large language models work is becoming more and more useful as AI spreads into new applications. And that's where this video sponsor Brilliant has you covered. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, and AI. And their latest course on large language models, like the one that powers ChatGPT, does exactly that. Understanding how these generative AI applications work has really helped me in my everyday tasks, because once I understood what's going on behind the scenes, now I can really put what's best into these tools without just getting out nonsense. Brilliant's emphasis on interactive learning, which is six times more effective than passive learning methods like watching lecture videos, can truly be transformative. With Brilliant, you learn by doing. This unique approach makes it feel like more of a game. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Atomic Blender or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So be sure to check it out. Just before midnight on March 3rd, 2022, Russian armored vehicles and tanks began to move in on the Zaporizhia nuclear plant. Ukrainian forces responded by defending with anti-tank weapons, leading to fierce fighting between the two sides for the next several hours. During this time, recorded video shows remarkable scenes. Explosions of vital equipment like electrical transformers, fire at the station's training facility, and significant damage to other structures of the plant. Ultimately, the Russian forces seized the station, and on 12th of March, just nine days later, the plant's management were told that Rosatom, the Russian state nuclear company, was now in charge of the reactors. While the plant continued to be run by Ukrainian staff, satellite images showed Russian forces establishing defensive positions alarmingly close to the six reactor units. It wouldn't be until several months later, in September, that the world would finally get a closer look at what the damage actually was. The International Atomic Energy Agency sent a team directly to the site to inspect and assess the situation, looking for anything that could impact safety of the plant or the surrounding population. What they found was shocking. The impacts of the conflict were everywhere, from shattered windows to holes in the roof, damage to support buildings from rocket attacks, and even scars on the concrete reactor containments from shelling. Never before had we seen this kind of situation at a nuclear power plant. Shortly after the IEA's visit, to minimize the risk of any further accidents, the last of the six units were shut down and transferred into a cold state, completely stopping the plant's operations. This brings about an increased level of safety, but there are still many areas to be concerned about. The Zaporizhia station still maintains fresh and spent fuel storage facilities, and significant damage was seen in the areas around these structures, including holes in the roof from shelling. If explosives reached the nuclear material, highly radioactive particles could be spread across the site and launched up into the atmosphere. It is worth pointing out that, although this would be a horrible situation, there is some good news. Because the plants are in a cold shutdown, it is essentially impossible to have any kind of nuclear explosion like what occurred at Chernobyl. Only a deliberate restart and complete loss of the safety systems could result in that level of disaster. And although Russia says it would consider restarting some of the reactors to supply heat during the cold winter months, so far all of the reactors remain in a shutdown state. The IEA says the situation at Zaporizhia remains dangerous, with all of its pillars of safety having been compromised. Their most recent report from February highlights major ongoing risks to nuclear safety. 
The physical integrity of the site is not good. Ongoing nearby shelling and the placement of landmines present a constant threat to nuclear safety and security. Damage to the site's reactor buildings, facilities housing nuclear fuel and radioactive waste, electrical switchyards, and emergency cooling equipment was all observed. Damage to backup generators, including vital connections and diesel fuel supplies, means that if an accident does occur, the plant will have limited options to respond. Of course, even working safety equipment is meaningless if there's no staff available to properly use it. Ukrainian staff continue to perform their duties at Zaporizhia, but what is under essentially constant control from Russian soldiers. I don't know about you, but I don't work particularly well at gunpoint. This has led to limited staff availability, while many have been detained. Ukrainian personnel have also faced repeated demands from Rosatom to sign new employment contracts in order to keep their jobs, while their previous Ukrainian employer tells them not to. Constant changes to the organization structure have left employees unsure of the chain of command and who has responsibility for control of the plant on several occasions. The IAEA reports that staff are exhausted from having to work endless shifts, again, all while next to a conflict zone. Tired personnel and miscommunications increase the chances of mistakes that could lead to even small problems becoming much, much worse. And perhaps the most worrying challenge has been the unreliable availability of external power supplies. With all six units in shutdown, electricity to operate the facility and keep the safety systems active needs to come from the Ukrainian electrical grid. If these off-site power sources aren't available, then the plant has to rely on emergency diesel generators, which have their own challenges, like access to enough fuel oil. The Zaporizhia site normally has access to 10 off-site power lines. As of February 2024, it was down to just one. Since the start of the conflict in 2022, the site has suffered a complete loss of external power eight times, an extremely worrying situation. And despite reconnecting a second external line in March of 2024, the Director General of the IEA, Rafael Grossi, said in a statement, This positive development should not hide the fact that the power situation at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant continues to be extremely fragile and vulnerable to further disruptions. What once seemed unimaginable, military activity near a nuclear power plant, has become a daily reality. The situation is not improving. And as long as this tragic war continues, the plant remains in danger. So what can be done to ensure that the situation doesn't get any worse? Although the situation appears stable for now, as with any conflict, things can change rapidly. While there's no immediate end in sight, the IEA now has a continuous presence at the site and has laid out a few specific principles that aim to minimize the risk to nuclear safety and the surrounding area. First, there should be no attack or sabotage against the plant in particular the reactors, spent fuel, or personnel. This is critical to maintaining the plant's ability to respond to emergencies. Second, Zaporizhia should not be used as a base for weapons or military personnel to launch an attack. The mere presence of these things makes the site a target, either intentionally or unintentionally. And third, off-site power should not be put at risk. This ensures the necessary layers of redundancy and protection can be reliably used in an emergency. The situation in Ukraine continues to be tense, and it's difficult to say how things are going to play out. But one thing that everyone can agree on is that the Zaporizhia plant and its staff should be treated with the respect for nuclear safety and security that they deserve. Okay, now let's see how Ukraine, a country in a rather unique position, does on the Atomic Blender nuclear energy leaderboard. Starting with size. Updated figures on nuclear generation are understandably more difficult to reliably come by recently, so we'll be using data from 2022. Ukraine has 15 reactors across the country, mostly of various Soviet designs, producing just over 80 terawatt hours of electricity annually. This puts it above average for countries with nuclear energy. So on a scale of 1 to 10, it gets a 7 out of 10. While the country is still somewhat dependent on coal, it has significantly reduced its reliance on fossil fuels over the last decade. This loss hasn't really been made up with any new generation, leaving the country's nuclear stations with a growing share of the total. This growing importance of nuclear energy accounts for 55% of the total electrical output, significantly above average of other nuclear countries. So it gets an 8 out of 10. Ukraine has a decently long history of operating nuclear power, with heavy influence from the Soviet Union starting in the 1970s and expanding rapidly throughout the 1980s. However, performance has been mixed to say the least, with extended downtimes for maintenance and refurbishments, as well as the world's most famous nuclear accident. So for operating experience, it gets a 5 out of 10. Infrastructure. Because of its long experience, first under the Soviet Union, and then in its own right, Ukraine has developed an extensive supply chain, skilled personnel, and heavy fabrication facilities. 
It even has some domestic uranium supplies, although it still needs to rely on imports to run its fleet. After the Russian invasion of 2022, Ukraine has understandably started seeking outside suppliers for fuel and other components for its reactors. While this allows Ukraine's nuclear plants to keep operating for now, the situation is unstable and disruptions could happen at any time. So for now, it gets a 5 out of 10. Finally, growth. Nuclear output has been flat over the last decade, with no real change in the existing plants. However, declining coal output has meant that nuclear share of the total has increased, even if no new reactors were built. Somewhat surprisingly, despite the Russian invasion, the Ukrainian government is still working to build new reactors, with two units under construction and a third planned at the Khmelnytsky plant in the west. Again, my apologies to any Ukrainians watching for totally mispronouncing that. Government support is still strong, and long-term policies look to build more plants in the future. That, of course, depends a lot on external factors that most countries don't have to deal with. Still, it gets a 6 out of 10. Overall, that gives Ukraine a final score of 6.2, putting it just above India and the UK. The score here is certainly feeling the effects from the active conflict with Russia, but maybe in a few years, we'll start to see a more stabilized nuclear sector in the country. And remember to check out Brilliant to see everything they have to offer free for a full 30 days at brilliant.org slash atomic blender, or click the link down in the description below. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And if you'd like to see how a country with a rather unique development earned its spot on the leaderboard, then you should check out this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.